What's going on everybody? Super Saiyan Paul here back at it again. Today we got another Dragon Ball Super movie discussion video slash theory, speculation and all of that. But before we jump into this video guys, make sure you guys smash that like button for me, subscribe as well as turn on notifications. I know you guys always do this for me but please keep it up because YouTube isn't showing all of the videos that you guys normally subscribe to and it's been revealed that like the sub box has been broken for some days. So make sure you guys do that. This way you guys can participate in any incoming news information updates as well as discussion in the comment section below. Anyway guys, today we're going to be talking about the Dragon Ball Super movie that's going to be debuting on December 14, 2018. And from what we've seen in the teaser trailer, this is revealing to be an ancient Saiyan, could be Yamochi, it could be another Saiyan from another universe. It's not 100% confirmed, but in terms of speculation, that's basically what we've been revealed to have had. Now, the reason why a lot of people mentioned Yamoshi being the like the character right away is because Akira Toriyama has mentioned him as a character and therefore he's been canonized because of that. And him being the original Super Saiyan God, even if they might retcon the title of him being the Super Saiyan God or anything, they could retcon anything at this point. They've literally done that time and time again. But I mean, the overall concept is he's the original Saiyan and he's from the past and he's like he's the original Super Saiyan God and things, things of this nature. Other comments that Akira Toriyama's mentioned before that he hasn't put into fruition yet and into the series is the concept of Jine. Jine is Goku's mother and like I speculated this before a long long time ago where it was back when I think the Saiyans were first revealed in Dragon Ball Super. I think when it was, they were first unveiled the Universe 6 and Shampa was like I have a few Saiyans of my own for that original tournament. This is way back, way 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 back. I speculate that maybe there's a chance that maybe they might use this as an opportunity to show Jine. Now, someone else asked me this, like, yo, do you think with this being the movie where you see the most Saiyans ever, it's quoted to have the most Saiyans ever, it's going to reveal the origins of the Saiyans based on what we've seen here, and it's going to have this new Saiyan appear out of nowhere. We're not sure if he's coming from a revived universe, or if he's from the past, or if this just, just connects with something that happened with that finale of the Tournament of Power, but I mean, it should because this is following the aftermath of the Tournament of Power. It specifically states that it's following the canonized story here, and... It's still yet another great opportunity for them to use Jine as a character. Do I think it'll happen? Honestly, no. The, the reason why is because didn't they have like a small mini series of her, like in the manga or something like that? It's not necessarily like a priority for them to, to reveal her, but I think like in terms of continuing the story and just having her show up, I think that would add a lot of hype to the episode or whatever movie she's in because her being Goku's mother, the same thing with like father of um, Goku, the special which is where Bardock was in that movie it was really really hype and a lot of people like Bardock because of the way that movie went and him just being the character him being Goku's father I think they would love the concept of Goku's mother maybe not as much, it depends on how they integrate her into the story and I, I mean in terms of power and stuff like that I don't know necessarily, sh I'm not necessarily sure how shang Shi would be, I mean it depends on what they want to do I, I, I honestly would assume that she wouldn't be like Super Saiyan level or anything like that because that wouldn't really make too much sense. But for them to integrate her into the story, tell me if you guys think that would be a good thing just to see Goku's mother at least once. And I think now with this new Saiyan appearing, it depends on how they reveal him as well that will really make everything fit. Because if they reveal that, okay, another universe had Saiyans and you guys just revived them all with that very vague wish at the end of Dragon Ball Super, um, Android 17's wish to please just to um, undo the, de the destruction of all the universes was basically what brought her back in a way sense of form because of this new Saiyan appearing from there or she could be brought back from the Dragon Balls or some way or shape or form of Goku meeting his parents. We know that anything is literally possible mainly because the whole concept of Dragon Ball Super is revolving around the Super Dragon Balls which literally can do anything. So to say that something's too far-fetched isn't necessarily the case anymore especially with how the wishes work with the Super Dragon Balls and the entire series name being around the Super Dragon Balls. Back in the day when it was just Dragon Ball Z which was technically Dragon Ball 2 it wasn't like unlimited power like it is now because with the Dragon Balls they still had limits. If you don't count Purunga, which I think honestly should they should have abused more if they really wanted to get the best wishes ever. Use Shenron just to get to Namek and then use Purunga to get your wishes. Therefore you guys have much much more value. But I don't think they wanted to harass the Namekians like that and cause too much um, unwanted 
like sightseers or anything to come to that planet again like what happened before but i'm just asking you guys if they did bring gene into the story if they did integrate her do you guys think that it would be awesome to see her and i think like the best concept in my head is to have like maybe a small bond with goku and then have her taken away brutally like honestly have her destroyed by the saiyan in front of his eyes i don't know i just want to see something dramatic revolving around that because literally like some of the best moments in dragon ball for me like moments where they jump into like the spur of the action because one of the loved ones die and i think ironically one of the characters that do this very very well is vegeta Remember when Trunks died in the Cell Saga, and the first person that rushed in when he saw that Trunks got that huge hole in his stomach, what happened? Vegeta rushed in there, and he just went into like a one-man army mode and tried to take him on. It was freaking epic. And then when Bulma got slapped by Beerus in the Battle of Gods arc, once again, Vegeta went complete apeshit, so... I think for him, to, I mean, it wouldn't have the most amount of time to like build into one of these relationships where it's like very, very close and knitly tighted like the way Vegeta does with his family, but it's still a really nice and unique concept. You never know how this may like play on. You never know if she just might show up for a bit and then they let her stay in the show similar to like Beerus and let the bond build up that would probably be the better thing and then take her away take her away because that would probably be i think in my head would be the best way to use her as a character because it like having a devastating moment i think the best moments to be seen of goku is when literally going back to when goku first went super saiyan and quillen died i want to see those moments much much more often because i mean not too often to the point where it's going to be dulled down but just seeing those moments of rage and an emotion from goku just really bring out everything especially with the mastered ultra instinct fight where you see that look in his eye it's just completely different he's completely changed and he's just completely serious compared to when he's in his happy-go-lucky pure-hearted form where when he's in base form and he's playing around i like both but I think I like when he's just in the serious mode a lot more and introducing G introducing both Jine and maybe one day meeting Bardock. It's not far-fetched to say that because the Super Dragon Balls exist. We've seen this happen before in weird, like weird moments where Frieza has lined it up in the show where he looked at Goku and he was like, that's Bardock's son. In a way, he's like, haven't I seen you before? And then remember, he killed Bardock and all these flashbacks started playing. The best movie in terms of like continuities for the show, like in terms of like the old school Dragon Ball Z movies was the history of um history of trunks and father of goku which was bardock those two movies did really good at integrating themselves with the series and then there was battle of gods which followed it up because that was a canonized story which was retconned and super technically but Hopefully, if we get this movie, like we're about to see right now, there's still always the chance that they, sh they might show up. And if not, I mean, I'm not hoping that this happens, but if they redo this part in Super, if Super does inevitably return, because we know that they're gearing up for a lot more episodes because of the new department. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check out my last video, where I explain on in a news article that they literally set up a Dragon Ball room a couple years ago for them to integrate new ideas into the show. Now they're building a whole new headquarters for it, while quote-unquote Dragon Ball Super has technically ended so while this is happening this movie is being released on this massive hype train and then following that that's when we can see all these things happen so if they decide to continue the series with the Dragon Ball Super name there's a chance that they may recap the movie similar to what Naruto did similar to what Dragon Ball Z did with the Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods movie and Resurrection F being reformatted into Super Storyline so tell me in the comment section below do you guys think that Goku will ever meet Jinae do you think he'll ever meet Bardock do you guys think that it would be a cool concept at the very least for him to meet these characters at least once in the show I mean it's it, it might not be necessary but at the same time it's still a great thing to happen because I mean having your parents show up on the show and like remember trunks showed up out of nowhere and they built him into an amazing character they can still kind of do the same thing because bardock there's still a huge huge fandom from bardock and we're not necessarily sure how the fandom is for gina because she's never been shown in the show before but i think with these type of elements in play especially with the hype between goku bardock meeting if they were to introduce Jine, that would just be even better because her they can they have a good chance of making her a good unique character. It's Goku's mom for crying out loud! Loud. So I think that I said lard. I think that would be a really cool concept. Tell me if you guys agree. Smash that like button, subscribe, as well as turn on notifications. Do you think that Jine would have a connection with Goku? And also, do you guys think that do you like Goku's happy go luckiness, or do you guys like when he's sad and he's ready to tear people limb from limb for messing with his family? I 
still think that's personally the best way to integrate her into the show. It'll be awesome if they did, and they still have all the time in the world to really, really put these ideas into fruition in the show with all of these new things and th stuff being set up with this new movie. Anyway, guys, I'll be seeing you guys next time. Smash the like button. I'll be seeing you guys then. Take care. Peace.